Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five-minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. I'm Wired to Inspire, Mentor from Afar, with Robin Nicole, the Inspiration Specialist. I've always felt a deep sense of obligation to make the biggest impact possible with this incredible platform. So I took on issues that were personal to me. Issues like helping families raise healthier kids, honoring the incredible military families that I've met out on the campaign trail, inspiring our young people to value their education and finish college. Now, some folks criticize my choices for not being bold enough But these were my choices, my issues, and I decided to tackle them in a way that felt most authentic to me, in a way that was both substantive and strategic, but also fun and hopefully inspiring. So I immersed myself in the policy details. I worked with Congress on legislation, gave speeches to CEOs, military generals, Hollywood executives, but I also worked to ensure that my efforts would resonate with kids and families. And that meant doing things in a creative and unconventional way. So yeah, I planted a garden and hula hooped on the White House lawn with kids. I did some mom dancing on TV. I celebrated military kids with Kermit the Frog. I asked folks across the country to wear their alma mater's t-shirts for college signing day. And at the end of the day, by staying true to the me I've always known, I found that this journey has been incredibly freeing because no matter what happened, I had the peace of mind of knowing that all of the chatter, the name calling, the doubting, all of it was just noise. It did not define me. It didn't change who I was. And most importantly, it couldn't hold me back. I have learned that as long as I hold fast to my beliefs and values and follow my own moral compass, then the only expectations I need to live up to are my own. I want you all to stay true to the most real, most sincere, most authentic parts of yourselves. I want you to ask those basic questions. Who do you want to be? What inspires you? How do you want to give back? And then I want you to take a deep breath and trust yourselves to chart your own course and make your mark on the world. Maybe it feels like you're supposed to go to law school, but what you really want to do is teach little kids. Maybe your parents are expecting you to come back home after you graduate, but you're feeling a pull to travel the world. I I want you to listen to those thoughts. I want you to act with both your mind, but also your heart. And no matter what path you choose, I want you to make sure it's you choosing it and not someone else. So what you just heard was a commencement speech done by Michelle Obama. And in this particular segment of the speech, she was talking about being authentic. I thought this was timely. I thought this was actually a confirmation from God for me because the entire platform and premise that he has given me is about living your authentic purpose. Michelle Obama is indeed one of my favorite human beings. You know, I don't typically put a whole lot of weight on other people because we're all pretty much, you know, one in the same. But to be a black girl, <laughs> to be a black girl and to see her do what she has done for women in general, but for black women, for this country, for the world at large, it, it, I'm tearing up talking about it because it just means everything to me. 
when I think about my parents and when I think about my dad and he tells me stories about the civil rights movement and times he's marched and things like that. And, you know, he'll talk about Dr. King. And I think he actually went to school with one of the icons who, uh, you know, was a major part of the movement. That was his time. That was his iconic moment in life where he could say, no matter how old I am, I remember this. You know, this was these were these were heavy times. These were hard times. But because of Dr. King and the like, we were able to see some sunshine. We were able to see, you know, that there was light at the end of the tunnel. So I guess I get emotional for multiple reasons, but namely because we see the dreams of our parents come true through Michelle and even Barack. You know, but but today as I talk about Michelle, I just I'm just so grateful to God for her. You know, and and again, like I said, I don't put anybody before God. I don't it's not it's not like that. But I will say that if you had to ask me who was one of my favorite people in the world, she would certainly be one of them. And she'd be at the top of the list because she fearlessly approaches situations and and, and approaches her life as her authentic self. And she impacts so many gems in this short five minute snippet from this commencement speech that I knew that it was the perfect thing to talk about. And I knew that for somebody listening, it was going to make an impact and it was going to cause change because y'all God just has such an interesting and funny sense of humor because, you know, that there's a saying, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your, your plans. Right. And I think about that because many times we'll tell God our plans and we'll tell him something that we think or we'll tell him something based on what someone else has said about us or what they think we should do. And that will oftentimes hinder us and keep us from the very best that God actually does have for us. So, you know, with that being said, you know, I want to unpack a few things that she talked about and I want to just encourage you. To operate in authentic freedom. So that's what I'm calling this today. Authentic freedom. So here's the first thing. You know. Whoever you are. Wherever you are. Whatever you are doing. You have an opportunity to make impact. You may not be the person on the stage on the microphone. You may not be the famous person. You may not be the person that everybody knows at your job. You may not, you may, you may just volunteer somewhere, not just, but you may volunteer somewhere and you may not think that that's a lot. Um, you may feel like there are things that you want to do that you don't have. So you, you almost feel disqualified. If you listen to this podcast at all, I say this a lot, probably to the point where some people are like, okay, Robin, I get it. I don't want to hear it. But I never know who's going to listen and I never want to miss an opportunity to say something that's an on time word. Because sometimes you can hear something repeatedly and even hear it again. And at one time it affects you differently because at that one time you were at a different space in your life. So what I'm saying to you now is how can you make the biggest impact with what you have? Is it inspiring your nieces or your nephews? Is it taking extra time out with your children? Is it teaching them a new skill? Is it, you know, joining a group that, you know, you have uh, things in common with and, and you put your wisdom and your knowledge out there and you, you become impactful? There's so many things that you can do, literally a plethora of things that you can do that could allow you to make impact by being just who God made you to be. You know, and then, and then it asks the question, you know, guys, go to my vision hacks. Go hit the link be, um, beneath this uh, podcast and definitely go and check out all of my hacks. It's three different sets of hacks. It's faith, provision, and vision hacks. And all of those talk about these very questions. And I actually break down what you have to do to actually see some things come to pass if you're following the things that God is telling you to do. And this is why it's just so important that you do not. Uh, write yourself out of the story by being inauthentic. Y'all, do you understand? Your mouth, death and life is in the power of the tongue. That is in the Bible. That is a scripture, correct? The thing that I want you to think about is it is also a weapon. You know, your words can slaughter people. And you know, there's a saying, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, or words shall never hurt me. Lies and garbage. Sticks and stones can break your bones and they will heal and you will be back up lickety split. But somebody could tell you something in 1927 and 2046, you still upset about it. 
because that's how much power words have. So just imagine if you're writing yourself out of the equation, how is that going to help you add value to the things that God wants you to put out in the world? How can that cause you to have impact if you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing? Because you're not and you're not in the frame of mind of understanding, hey, listen, if I'm not going to do me, I'm going to write myself out of the equation. And I can't do that. I can't afford to write myself out of the equation because people are counting on me. You know, think about it. What are you already passionate about that hits, hits close to home for you? She talked about that. She said when she received that platform of being first lady, she didn't, she said a lot of people were not happy with the choices she made, but she made choices based on who she was because she knew if she connected with what she was already passionate about and what she knows she could inspire change, she knew that she would make the most impact that way. And you know what? In retrospect, it was incredible. She had black people eating healthy, eating vegetables, stuff that they never did she has gardens in a hood and places where it's cement concrete jungle and she has dirt and 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 and, 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 uh, and, and, and seeds and, and plants and gardens and all of these things coming to pass because she stuck to who she was as an individual who God made her to be so I ask you this who is it that God is telling you to be how can you be authentically free to be who he called you to be how can you live your authentic purpose Y'all tell you this all the time. Purpose is just not a one trick pony where I just give you an answer. or Anybody gives you an answer and boom, that's it. It takes cultivating. It takes time. You have to do that. And she said something else that was very telling. She said, do what makes you feel most authentic to you. What makes you feel like, hey, I could do this all day long. I'm, I'm coming from the purest place. I'm doing exactly what it is I feel I'm supposed to be doing. And I know that I'm helping others. I know that I'm helping others. So I want you to take a moment. Download this episode. Stop and download this episode if you're just playing it. Because I want you to, I want you to follow these steps. The first thing is take a moment and write it down if you have to. Okay? But what does that look like for you? If you were to ask yourself those questions, how can you make the basic, biggest impact? Do you even feel like you have the ability to make the biggest impact? Because perhaps you have the wrong view of the way your life is right now. You may not be in a space that you think you're supposed to be in. You may not be balling and doing the things that you thought were going to be great and perfect and awesome. But what do you have? It's like the, um, the woman in the Bible with the jars. You know, God was like, yo, get your jars. Fill up the jars with the things that you have in the house already. You don't have to get nothing new. Work with what you already have. And that's the same thing we're talking about right now. What do you have? Go get the jars and fill it up with what you already have. Listen, it might not be what the other person has. And in fact, I can guarantee you it's not going to be what they have. Y'all can have the same exact item with the same serial number. But you know what's going to make it different? You. You have to do you with it. You and your, your, your classmate, your teammate, your colleague, your friend, your business partner, y'all both can have the same notebook. But what's going to determine what's going to happen is what you put in yours. And it's just that simple. You have the power to do that. And I think this is just such a powerful time in the world. This is such a powerful word, such a powerful explanation of authenticity. Because when you have the biggest platform in the free world and you take that thing and you go out on a risk, I mean, you take a risk and say, you know what? Psh- I'm going to go ahead and do me. I'm not worrying about what everybody else is saying. And then, you know, she had a husband that was in full support. So I say to you, you may not have a husband or a spouse. You may not have anybody in your ear telling you what to do. But guess what? You know in your knower. Listen, God gives us what we need individually. We all have it. Nobody is different. God is no respecter of persons. It's just that some people take that little bit he gives them and they go ahead and and, and, in two shakes, they got something multiplied. You know, you're supposed to multiply. Listen, we serve a God of multiplication. God is not going to subtract from you. That's not how he gets down. Now you can subtract from yourself. Because you write yourself out of the equation because you are lacking authenticity. And I want you to ask this question too. Now somebody might get mad, but you know how we get down over here. We're trying to get you the purpose. So if it gets you mad, that's great. Because that means that it's chipping away at something that needs to go. And you might not like it, but let's just rip the band-aid off. How many of you are doing something right now because because somebody else told you to do it? But you have too much pride to admit it. You need deep in it. Don't even feel like you need, don't even know if you can go back. To the original plan that you you have for yourself, but 
You had you you spoken so much about this thing. You put so much out in the atmosphere about oh it's so this and this so that. But you know when you go home, you upset, you crying, you praying, you writing, you talking to people, the couple of people who may know the actual truth, but you're miserable. You let me tell you something. A lot of people go through that. I was one that was going through it until I snapped out of it real quick, and I had to begin making declarations. I had to begin speaking to myself. I had to begin to speak to the queen in myself. Because sometimes God will put you in a situation, y'all, where nobody else can speak to the queen or to the king in you. Because you know what will happen? If you don't take over and speak to the queen in you when it's going down, the enemy will speak to the fool in you. And you will begin to believe that silliness. You will begin to believe that who you are authentically is not good enough. And that is why we are here today to remind you about your authentic freedom. We are here to remind you that when you do it God's way, you will be yourself. When you do it his way, that's what I love about Christ. That's what I love about this whole walk with him. I'm not perfect. I'm not. And I literally have seen people who quote unquote are supposed to be my friends. They're supposed to be prayer partners, their sisters in Christ, brothers in Christ, all of this stuff. But people fake the funk and they'll go right behind you and make a post. They'll go right behind your back and say something about you or do all of this stuff. And they're not even being who they are. I'm busy being me, making the mistakes that I have to make for my life. But they're over there judging. They're over there doing this and they're doing that because they're not focusing on doing them. They're not focusing on being authentic for themselves. So that's why I tell you, when you play around and, 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 and you don't do you, you will find yourself gossiping. You will find yourself mealy mountain. You will find, find yourself being a victim. You will find yourself living somebody else's life. You will be living, the, you will li- be living your worst life while watching somebody else's best life. Huh. That's a word right there. So you have to make that choice. Something else that she said that I thought was so awesome, which inspired the topic of authentic freedom, was that she said, it's free to be yourself. You feel free. You feel like a new person. You know, like nothing's holding you back. And if anybody has something to say about it, okay, deal with it. Kick rocks. Because at the end of the day, you are the one that has to deal with your decisions. You can't worry about what people say. And when she talked about how people have something to say, that's what I'm talking. I'm going through that right now. People always have something to say. How many of you listening know, how, know what I'm talking about? People always got something to say. Somebody always popping off. Somebody always running their mouth. But are you going to let that stop you? Are you going to sit down all day and talk about these people? Are you going to sit down and waste countless hours and moments about how they're this and how they're that? You don't have time for that. You are on a mission. You are on a mission to live authentically so that you can create a life that God is proud of. Where you are helping other people. A life that gives you nothing but joy. You want a life that supersedes happiness. Happiness is is lightweight. You want joy because joy is not fleeting. When you get the joy from God that he has put on the inside of you that comes from him. Okay. When you get that and when you begin to look at your life in pieces, you can break down your life in pieces. And then you can begin to trace God in every area of your life. And you'll see joy just sprouting up, sprouting up, sprouting up because that's who we serve. See, when we do things, we try to be happy. We try to be, you know, get, get that momentary feeling of, you know, oh, wow, I'm so happy. I don't know an opposite to joy. I know the opposite of, of, of happiness is, uh, is pain. It's sad. Excuse me. It's sad and it's not pain. People say the opposite of joy is pain. And I, I just don't agree with that. You know, because I just personally believe that when you seek the joy of the Lord, he will begin to illuminate to you. This is who I made you, son. This is who I made you, daughter. It does not have to be what everybody else thinks, but this is who I made you to be. And this is what I'm going to encourage you to do. I'm going to encourage you to do you. And, you know, I made a post yesterday on my Instagram or last night, actually. And I said, don't say anything about yourself that you don't want to come true. Brian Tracy made that comment, made that quote. Don't say anything about yourself that you don't want to come true. So I need you to go back and choose your words and I need you to think about how how authentic you're being for yourself. What is that looking like for you? Because you know something else that Michelle said that that, that really, um, it made me think of the word balance. It made me think of balance. She said, when you are living authentically and you figure out who you're going to help and what you're going to do, it's going to have substance. You're going to have fun. 
and you're going to be strategic. Those three things stuck out to me because if you are able to provide substance, fun, and a, and a dope strategy simultaneously, you are far ahead of the game. And imagine doing that with something that you feel passionate about, something you feel called to do. Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes your passion, your passion could just be fleeting and, you know, it's like, oh, okay, it's cool. But your purpose, you're doing what God has called you to do. That is your game changer. That is the thing that opens the door. That is the thing that shows you, okay, you know what? I can do this. It does not matter what it looks like, the hard days or the hard days, but I actually live for this. I love this. I love taking care of the kids. I love mentoring. I love coaching. I love teaching. I love teaching people how to sew. I love studying. I love reading because when I do this, it will help such and such do such and such. Whatever the case may be, you fill in the blanks for yourself. But I want you to remember that, y'all. When you begin to operate in your authentic purpose and you do you, you have that freedom. Imagine waking up every day and you putting out substance. You're having a great time and you legit have a plan. You legit have a strategic plan and it's all working in tandem together. It is literally blowing your mind. Y'all, Michelle is no different than us, y'all. You can do the same thing. You can do the same exact thing. Get your pen, get your paper, write the vision, make it plain. Though it may tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. Go ahead and write the blueprint. Write that thing out and show God you're serious about being who he called you to be. Not Trying to be who somebody else is telling you to be or go where they're telling you to go. If it just so happens to be on one accord with what you said, that's fine. But no, you want to do what God is telling you to do. Because y'all, you know what? It's foolproof. When you get in there, you handle your business the way he's telling you. You're tapping into the things that, have, that you've nurtured, the things that you've cultivated, the things that you know that you can, with your eyes closed, you can provide impact. That is your game changer. That is what I love about that woman. That is something that I learned from her that I take with me. She reminds me so much of my mother, too, with that go-getter spirit coming from nothing and just rising up and just balling out and doing all of these things that people never thought she can do. And it's because she stayed who she was. She was authentic. And it's the same thing with Michelle Obama. And that's what I absolutely love. So as I close up, I just want to I wanna hit home with a couple of things for you guys. Because I want you to think. I don't want you to take this lightly. Y'all, when we do mentor from afar, it is legit a passion project for me. It is legit something where I personally highlight and showcase people that have impacted me or, or sh have shown me something that I think could also add value to you. But from my perspective, y'all, you wouldn't believe there, there are Christians and people who no longer support me anymore because they think that I use secular people. They don't like me talking about this one. They don't like me talking about that one. And this is what I'm going to say. You can't ever tell me what God told me if you weren't there when he told me. <laughs> if he didn't tell you, and he, excuse me, if he if, if you weren't there and you don't know and I got the confirmations I need, then that might be time for your exit. Now, I'm saying that because I just feel like somebody needs to hear that, too. As God begins to elevate you, he is going to he is going to tell you to do things that may not add up because everybody I talk about is not a pastor or a preacher or somebody who's in clergy. I talk about actors and actresses and musicians and, and, and politicians and people who are human beings, just human beings, just like us. I think that we do ourselves a grave disservice when we become overly religious with a religious spirit or we sit on a soapbox and we, we separate Christ from these things. Oh, because you're going to hear me say Jesus and you're going to hear me say Christ. The person that I'm talking about may or may not believe it. But if I see that there's a teachable moment where you can find Christ in it, then I'm going to share that with you because that's what I'm called to do. I'm not here to dance for other people. I'm not here to for people to like me and say, oh, Robin is so great. I absolutely appreciate that when it happens. God knows I genuinely do from my heart, but I am here to serve the Lord. And believe you me, even when you're becoming authentic, y'all see, look, this is the Holy Spirit. Let me tell y'all something. Even when you are doing, even when you're doing this thing, I'm talking about being authentic. It is scary and it's not easy. When God first gave this thing to me, even then, I didn't want to do it because I'm like, God, I don't really, I don't talk about like famous people and I stick to the word. I'm constantly posting these scriptures like that's where I'm at in my life. And he said, Robin, I am giving you the ability to do something else. And I fought him on it for months. 
I didn't want to do it. And it, and it's so heartbreaking because I literally had people I thought had my back and perhaps would come have a conversation about the changes and the things that were going on with me, but they didn't. They just started to slander me and say things indirectly and want to play internet gangsters and, and, and I'm getting phone calls and texts about things being done behind my back. I'm only sharing that with you because I'm not, I'm authentic. I have to be Robin. And if I act like everything is all good, I get attacked all the time. Trust me. I am no different than anybody else. But I tell you what, the Lord has put a boldness in me and he has put a confidence in me to do this thing the way he wants me to do it. And trust me, there are times I have to edit, times I have to stop, times I have to pause and he has to get me together. Trust me, it's a process every day. But I have to be consistent and I have to know that whatever this is he's doing in this season, in this hour that's causing me to do this, it's about me being my authentic self. And it's the authentic purpose that he's called for me. If I make these things and they don't lead you to Christ, then I'm wasting my time. Because here is the thing. The Lord says that, you know, he loves us unconditionally. There's nothing... There is nothing that he won't do for us. And he says it just by dying on a cross for us. <laughs> so, you know, that's the words right there. That's the verbiage right there, period. Actions. The actions so great, words weren't necessary. You know what I'm saying? So, again, this is a space that I use for that. And my thing is this. If God says that you're, you know, the Bible talks about you being a masterpiece. Another scripture talks about how you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Another scripture talks about how you won't. Have to want for no good thing. Another scripture talks about how God will never leave you or forsake you. So trust me when I tell you, you have to be who you are. That's Bible. You have to be who God has called you to be. Because that is going to be the thing that's going to get you closer to him. And that is going to be the thing that is going to cause you to live the authentic purpose that he has created and designed for you. It won't come any other way. I can guarantee it. You can, you can play around with it. You can mess around with it and think it's going to be one thing and it's not. But trust me when I tell you, God is in the business of keeping his word. <laughs> With all your imperfections, with the people not liking you, people thinking you this and oh, you done changed. Or, oh, girl, you need to do this. Why you like that? Or, oh, girl, you heard what he said. Just mess, foolishness, fake jesus all that mess, all that could kick rocks. You put your focus on doing what God is telling you to do. And if you're wrong, he's going to let you know. And if, you, if you're doing the right thing, he's going to continue to encourage you. If you need to make edits and changes, he'll do that. But that is why what Michelle Obama said today was perfectly put. Do you trust yourself? Are you going to do something that's including substance and fun and being strategic? Are you going to make the biggest impact with the platform that you are given? God has given you a platform, y'all. Are you going to make that leap? Are you going to do the thing that he's telling you to do unapologetically? What is making you feel most like yourself? Think about these things. Are you praying and not listening? Could you be in an inauthentic rock in a hard place because you don't know the answers to these questions? That's why I said download it. Play it back. Ask yourself the questions and see what the answers look like. What the answer's hitting for. Because if the answers, if you can't answer, then you go right there. You got a whole other thing you got to start with. Because sometimes we operate in stuff So long, we're not realizing that we don't even know the answers ourselves. So, I'll ask you one more time. Could you be in an inauthentic rock in a hard place because you don't know the answers to these questions and you're just talking, but you're not actually doing what you need to do to see what you desire. You're not doing what you need to do to be authentically free. And you are not doing what you need to do that's going to give God the most glory this is a time to not play with God this is a time not to play games y'all trust me when I tell you those who have been obedient those who have trusted God they are eating the spoils they are eating the good of the land I'm telling you I'm a living witness you are listening to a walking testimony 
when I decided to be authentically free, when I decided to be exactly who God called me to be, my entire life changed. My entire life changed. And I don't know who needs to take that leap of faith. Excuse me. I got real emotional. (laughs) Excuse me. I don't know who needs to take the leap of faith. But it's time for the God move, y'all. The good looks are over with. (laughs) It's a good look. Nah, bruh. That's that's 2017. It's time for the God moves, y'all. It's time for the God moves. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'm Wired to Inspire dot com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspiration specialist dot life or I'm Wired to Inspire dot com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.